It's Monday, September 23rd, and it's 11 o'clock on the dot right now as I'm beginning recording. And, you know, last week, Monday, I said we got a potential for an atmospheric river coming to British Columbia. It sure looks like. It sure looks like. You know, I'm hesitant to want to use that language at first because nobody else is. But uh, eventually, everyone caught up to what I was saying, and I was absolutely correct. We got Category 5 atmospheric river coming on. And I've been trying to explain to people in Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers because uh, guys are like, well, I live on the coast, and we get a lot of rain here, you know. Like, this isn't unusual. And I'm like, actually... This kind of is, and I mean, this seals the deal that they're calling a Category 5 now, right? We, I don't recall how many Cat 5 atmospheric rivers we've actually had come to British Columbia. I've definitely seen a few in our forecasting time here hit California area pretty hard, right? So... Uh, the big time concern is that we got flooding coming to the coast, right? So some flood watches and flood uh, high stream flow advisories have all kind of gone up around the coastal area. So we will be looking at that this morning. Also, baby Oakland was found alive yesterday. So we will talk briefly about that as well this morning. This is the bad news show, but it's got some good news too. Let's go. So search parties in Burns Lake have been looking since Thursday night. Baby Oakland, well, not a baby, she's six years old, but we're calling her baby Oakland. Uh, she's a girl with... with Developmental disabilities, not very verbal, who walked off from her family home. And they knew basically right away that for whatever reason, they knew that she wasn't kidnapped. I guess, you know, the family situation is pretty good. And I've seen the pictures today of, of the mom and the dad, you know, like there, no one was a suspect. Maybe they had CCTV cameras that saw no vehicles passing through the neighborhood. They had good reason to believe that she was somewhere in the area within walking distance. And that's exactly what happened. So later in the week... Uh, Hopefully, Bob Holowenko, who's also a moderator of Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers, this group that we run, yeah, he's one of the leaders at Quinell Search and Rescue. They did go out there to Burns Lake and take part in some uh, effect. I'm not sure exactly what their involvement was, but we'll find out this week. I think Bob's going to come on. We're going to have a little bit of an interview with Bob and talk about what it was like there. And, you know, hey, she was like, she Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, they found her Sunday. She was three nights out without shoes. They found her in a gully with this weather. And I mean, when I saw the forecast and I knew she was out there, I, I didn't think she was going to live. You know, I, I, I hesitated to say anything in my last forecast because I didn't have a positive feeling about where this was going. So we got a positive ending. Anyways, let's talk about today's sponsors for the show. If you are in Kamloops, Thompson, Nicola, Caribou, we would like you to take special attention to Footage Fridays. They have video and audio equipment at Butterfly Effect Communications, and they want to get more practice by capturing video, photo, and audio for you. The stuff that you want every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, they'll release limited deals for the week exclusively for subscribers of their newsletter, LinkedIn, YouTube channels. You receive the footage they capture. Subscribe now for access and watch for limited in-time special, including the caribou. That's at butterflyeffectcommunications.ca. Very thankful for your sponsorship, Tim. Here's where our high stream flow advisories currently are in British Columbia. That's because the atmospheric river really coming through this week is uh, punching straight towards Prince Rupert, Haida Gwaii. They're going to take the bulk of it before the storm does start to slowly settle its way down towards the mainland, down towards uh, Vancouver Island, things like that. So we're going to see a bit of a change. Some of this here will most likely end up moving southward, right? So, But for today, this is where we're at with the high stream flow advisories, and that encompasses a lot of the coast, right? We also do have flood watches in effect right now because this is a very strong atmospheric river. Category 5, like I was saying, right? Well, what does Category 5 atmospheric river mean? Here's what it means. Category 1, weak, primarily beneficial. Well, that's a good thing. We like, we like a Category 1 atmospheric river. Uh, primarily beneficial. We have those quite frequently in BC coast. Yeah, that's true. British Columbia gets atmospheric rivers. I mean, this is part of the setup of how the North Pacific operates, and we expect these kind of things. I think it's pretty common to see cats of one, two, and three hit BC. In fact, some of the stronger ones we've had still we're only at three or four, right? So uh, two being moderate, mostly beneficial. Also a little hazardous. Okay, well, balance of beneficial and hazardous if you get to number three strong. It's like, well, a lot of rain. A lot of rain is good, sure, but it could have some effects. Well, number four is extreme, mostly hazardous, also beneficial, uh, sure. But number five is no, exceptional. It's primarily hazardous. It's not really anything good associated with a Category 5 atmospheric river. It's too much rain all at once. So when I was telling you people, like, no, this is not normal coastal weather in September, right? I, it's not exactly even normal for November. We were talking about that uh, maybe it was early December, November. Let's. What was the exact date? Fuck. Let's find out. 
We're going to just have a look back at history for a minute and look at the 2006 storms in Vancouver. The first one hit November 5th. It was the remnants of Typhoon Cimarron that happened over in the Asian side of the ocean. Uh, the one in 15th caused landslides to Vancouver's three main reservoirs. That's something that we're definitely looking at being a possibility with this atmospheric river is landslides. This led to a water system becoming contaminated beyond the legal safety limit. And Boyle Water Advisory was there for 2 million residents for more than a week. So I was there for that. Brown water was coming. Turbid water was coming out of the taps. So it was not very nice. Um, so this continued storm after storm after storm much the same way this is right now crazy storm track where every day is like wow we got we got another big storm coming out there in the ocean somewhere right so low pressure systems were slowly replaced by an arctic ridge on temperatures on november 25th dipped to minus 12 celsius at vancouver international airport cities of metro vancouver and fraser valley were hit with a series of heavy snowstorms highest recorded one day snowfall from the event was 44 centimeters that occurred in abbotsford short burst of heavy snow produced long traffic delays and widespread school closures three weeks later came the december 14th storm which uprooted 10,000 trees in stanley park at its peak bc hydro reported that 250,000 customers were without power oh why are we looking back to 2006 because this is the same kind of one two three four five punch of storms coming through that could cause flooding could cause landslides right well we had a big landslide already in the chilcotin this year now i'm not saying there's going to be another one in the chilcotin river but i think that gave us a good example of what happens when water saturates steep country so we do have flood notification area for central coast that's in king Combe. King Kong River, including tributaries, river forecast centers, maintaining high stream flow advisory for everywhere else in those yellows, the north coast. That would be Stewart, Gitlax, Amex, New Ionish, uh, Terrace, Prince Rupert, Kitimat, and other coastal communities, and Haida Gwaii. Central coast, including tributaries and smaller streams around Bella Coola, Rivers Inlet, other coastal communities. Northern Vancouver Island could even start to see some flood watches and flood uh, high stream flow advisories get uh, put on them later in the week. So we're looking at that. The initial wave of rainfall and the current storm sequence is passing over north and central coast today. Forecast amounts possibly between 50 100 millimeter rain. Another storm is expected to arrive on Monday, bringing additional coastal rainfall. North coast will likely receive another 100 millimeters near the coastal areas and 54 it's inland. Based on weather forecasts on Tuesday, 50 to 80 millimeters of additional rain will continue to fall in north and coastal uh, central coast regions. Uh, whoa. The other area high stream flow response near Kitimat region. High stream flows in this area are generally expected to peak around two to five year return periods ranges. Although these peaks will be dependent on the location and rainfall totals of the next storm in the current sequence. For the most of uh, north and central coast regions, high stream flows are expected for the coming rainfall Monday and Tuesday. I did have one legitimate question. We'll take a minute and answer today. And that was about this stretch here. See, let's see this whole area of thunderstorms that's going on through Latin America down across past uh, south of Hawaii here over towards the Philippines, right? So someone's saying to me, well, is that not an atmospheric river too? And no, it is not. It is not. It's very different actually, right? So what you have here is this low pressure system pulling the cold air down, pulling the warm moisture out, trapped by the high pressure. This is leading to long bands of rain that stretch across the entire Pacific Ocean, long bands of available moisture. Whereas here at the intertropical convergence zone, this is not, uh, this is an area of thunderstorms that's happening every day in kind of more or less the way that we're looking at it right now. For example, it's a belt converging trade winds and rising air that encircles Earth's lower atmosphere near the equator. The rising air produces high cloudiness, frequent thunderstorms, and heavy rainfall. The doldrums, uh, oceanic regions of calm surface air also occur within this zone. Okay, still got this probably wind warning up here still. Still? Is this still a wind warning? Up? Still a wind warning up there. Northern Quebec, 90 kilometers an hour till this evening. That's been going on for days. But let's get back to British Columbia. Actually, before we do, let's go have a look at the Dempster Highway. Up at the Dempster Highway today, what's going on? Wind warning. Okay, 80 kilometer gust an hour near the Richardson Mountains. So strong winds if you're up by the Richardsons today. Main story today, though, is not that. The main story today is between Smithers and Kitwanga. 50 millimeters today. Possible. Today and tonight, heavy rains are possible at times. Uh, this continues over. You go a little bit farther west to get wind. Shilkwa. Over to get wind. Shilkwa. I probably didn't say that correctly. Oh, rainfall of 50 to 100 millimeters today. Stewart, get wind. Shilkwa. 
New Anish Terrace portions of Highway 16 can amount Highway 37. Big time rainfall. Rain will be heavier as you head towards the coast. 80 to 100 millimeters of rain in Prince Rupert and Hartley Bay today. Go down towards Bella Coola and on that stretch of coast, uh, Bella Bella. 150 millimeters possible by Tuesday morning. Clem 2 and surrounding areas. Bam! 150 mils. Dude! Craziness and 50 still for Haida Gwaii. Uh, strong storm system brings heavy rain to the region. Uh, the accumulations will be lower for the east coast of Haida Gwaii, including areas of Masset and Skidigit. So uh, why would that be? That would be because of the rain shadow effect, right? So uh, definitely things are getting that orographic lift. The moisture is coming up. It's rising up over the highlands in Haida Gwaii, and that means it's a little too high to precipitate by the time it goes over. So the East Coast is getting a little less rain. That's typical. You see that again and again and again. And you look at British Columbia, if you haven't noticed, the, the driest places are right on the other side of the hill from the rainforests. Here we are Monday afternoon. You really see that uh, atmospheric river heading all the way into the BC coast, going right to that surf inlet sort of area that we were looking at earlier this week. Areas that we thought, well, maybe that'll be where the storm kind of, you know, maybe I got lucky in forecasting that. Sure. You're going to watch how the the center of the weather keeps moving southward on Tuesday. So you're going to expect to see some of that rain make its way south into southern British Columbia before that next storm after this develops on Thursday. Uh, this looking good, though, to sending some rain to our Tweedsmere fires. Like I was saying the other day, we're really hoping that fire gets slammed with some rain so that we have no more holdouts next year, that the fire has nothing left in the tank, can't wake up, that every single little last goddamn ember is out. Cold. Uh, so that storm moving down the coast this week and Wednesday, it's going to really affect and impact the interior. It looks like more and more. And so we'll probably revisit this on Wednesday morning or Tuesday night. Uh, this should be the most interesting story for Southern British Columbia this week is how much rainfall are you going to get? Well, how much thunderstorms comes before that? And like I was saying in yesterday's video, uh, th these storms bring a mix of, of uh, snow to the high elevations sometimes and they bring uh thunderstorms at the front of it because you have so much mix of cold and warm you can see 22 in vernon and that's coming through at noon well what's that going to do 22 degrees and you get a cold front in behind that with lots of moisture bam uh big time thunderstorm potential it looks like salmon arm revelstoke areas Kelowna, maybe your areas that are going to see some strong thunderstorms that afternoon at least for a little while um you know and those are at the front side right so you know often when we think about a frontal system it's like here's a whole bunch of stuff coming and at the very beginning of it the very front line of it is where that punches in and you get thunderstorms that, that will pop up in the front of those kind of things right so that's what we're looking at on wednesdays a uh, chance of thunderstorms some heavy bursts of rain in those storms maybe even some snowflakes coming in overnight uh, into thursday morning um, did I just say Wednesday morning? Uh, Wednesday night, coming overnight into Thursday. That's when our next storm starts looking at the coast. This is the one that I'm really most impressed by. This is the one that I'm thinking is going to be the story of the week, right? So uh, 975 central low pressure predicted, going to hit the coast, going to put a lot of heavy rain to Vancouver Island. Uh, expect to see some some fresh Fresh examples of watches and warnings and flood watches and rainfall warnings and things like that. I think that this next storm on Thursday is going to be kind of the the culmination of a lot of crazy storm weather this week. So yeah, that's what we're looking forward to is how does that play out. And then it seems to me that the, the high pressure ridge that tends to live outside uh, off the BC coast, off and off the US coast, it may reestablish itself. And if it does that, it will bring us back to a, a track of weather that's kind of been more we've had uh, with, say, this storm right now going on with the one before it, right? So we, we had that kind of track, and you can see it right now developing that high pressure, reestablishing itself at least temporarily, and we'll see how long for. And that will allow for storms. I mean, that will still end up affecting Haida Gwaii, northern BC and whatnot. But, you know, that slipping of that storm down this week into southern British Columbia, that's stuff that we expect to see in November. Right? So this this right here would be a typical storm track for this time of year. The Alaska Panhandle getting hit hard. Alaska getting hit hard. Uh, so the north BC coast may be taking it on the chin pretty good. But you expect to see that high pressure establish itself again and maybe lead to BC having some... Some a little bit nicer weather, so uh, get through this next rainy, rainy week. It's gonna be gonna be an exciting week for weather, man. Everything's happening, and we, we see that this this track of storms continues. There's storm after storm after storm after storm is still coming. So you know who gets what and when, and you know I expect that like that 2006 
outbreak of weather that we're going to have deformation in the jet stream because of these large storms. Now, that's a very strong one. 969 looks like the most powerful one yet coming next week, Monday. I mean, that's far out. So 962, I mean, damn, if that happens, uh, these wind fields, I mean, that, that's insane. This is insane looking storms for this time of year already. So I know you've lived on the coast. You've seen it rain a lot over the years. Yes, you have. You've probably not seen it rain like this. You've probably not seen a storm like this come too often in September. This is a, a remarkable situation. And what will happen with these large storms will deform the jet stream and lead to uh, Arctic outbreaks at some point. So expect early in the season to see just like we had in November 2006, large snowfall dumps come to Vancouver. Expect to see at some point when we really dig into later in the fall or into the early winter, expect to see some of those uh, Arctic outbreaks be a mixture of of big-time snow and some big-time cold in the backside of it, right? So that's what we're looking forward to. Anyways, that's just today's fresh look at flood watches, advisories, and things like that in British Columbia. And um, again, I'm just so happy Oakland's been found safe. Uh, hopefully we get Bob Holowenko to come on here in the next uh, couple days, or maybe he'll come on to Meteorological Report, and we'll talk to Bob about what it was like looking for Oakland and how excited everybody is. I mean, the photo of the parents holding her, unbelievable. When I seen the mother's Facebook post, her live video on Friday, I sat here and I fucking bawled. You know, I'm a parent. I feel that. I feel that. You know, you can't you can't have your eyes on them every second of the day. I know you're supposed to, but I mean, is that possible? It's not. You know, and understandable things can happen. And that's every parent's worst nightmare that you take your eyes off them for five minutes. The phone rings or you, the laundry's done or whatever, you know, the food is burning. You got to run back in the house. And I don't know what happened. Right? I'm, I'm not guessing. I'm just giving examples of, of how easily these things can go bad for you when you have children who are nonverbal have autistic problems and things that you know you call them and they may or may not i don't know i don't know the specifics so maybe bob can help shed some light on that thanks to the sponsors thanks to all your supporters and patrons and, and members of the channel every little bit you do right now helps me i'm i really don't know how i'm going to get through this winter i don't so i'm i'm i have to be prolific i gotta put out weather videos every day i have to try to build income i have to build my 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 dream now. I have to. I don't have a choice. Lucky for you, you get a weatherman under the deal. Okay, bye now.